Greetings YouTube. In this film we are going to use the pinion lock ring tool pictured here to check the lock ring tension. Make sure it is exactly at 42 foot pounds. That is the torque spec the manufacturers in Germany recommend. First things first we're going to use a four millimeter hex key to loosen the hex bolts on the right side crank and because they're screwed into soft aluminum we're going to lubricate those with some WD-40 before we unscrew them. Then we're going to use a 10 millimeter hex key to loosen the bolt that holds on the crank itself. So this bolt is what provides the tension that holds the crank to the pinion drive train. And because we measure twice, screw once, we'll check with the caliber and make sure that it is exactly 10 millimeters. Now this bolt is pretty friendly tight, so we are going to just give it some leverage in both directions and see which way it moves and go to the path of least resistance. And in that case, it is counterclockwise. So we got that bolt out and now we can take this right crank arm off and to do that since we can't pull it off the spindle we're going to use a rubber mallet and gently tap it off. If you try prying you'll probably just damage the cog so I did probably just a little bit but I didn't want to damage the cog so I stopped doing that and went ahead and got my trusty rubber mallet and just give it a nice little tap tap tap. With the crank off we will go ahead and use a shop rag to clean all the little pieces of sand and dust and grease right off of it after we do a full rotation visual inspection of the assembly just checking it for anything that looks out of the ordinary. So now that it looks good, we're going to give it a nice little cleaning. Now that the cleaning's done and the inspection's done, we're going to go ahead and put our lock ring tool right there on the lock ring. Visualize our turning directions, which are engraved on the lock ring tool. I already went in ahead and shipped me this tool to test out for the troubleshooting process because my belt's slipping a little bit. So I'm going to make sure it's at the proper tension and then ship mm -hmm. it back to them because they were nice enough to let me borrow this part. I don't own it. So we've clipped in our half inch breaker bar, two foot lever, and I'll go ahead and put an equation for force on a lever so that you can figure that out yourself. Knowing that a practical way to calculate the magnitude of torque is to multiply this two foot length of a lever arm by the amount of force we're going to apply to it, we can get a good idea of how much pull we need on the bar to generate 42 pounds of torque. And 42 pounds is a good amount of torque, so in general terms, I'm going to pull decently hard on this lever arm, but not hard enough to break the part that's on it. If you have a torque wrench, you can use that to measure your torque. And in this case, I just use a little fishing scale to get a good idea of the torque I need. One thing you might also see in other videos, if they're actually removing the nut, not making sure it's tight enough, is they'll use a strap wrench on the cog that is the front cog or the front chain ring to use non-belt bike terminology. So we're going to get this nice and tight and that will let us verify that the lock ring is indeed set correctly. And the reason I'm doing this is because my belt was slipping a little bit and 
this is what the tech support at priority 600 recommended we try as just an option just to make sure this was assembly was done correctly at the factory because this bike is still pretty new so in this case I just use the opposite side crank to hold the spindle in place while I push down on the lock ring lever and it is nice and tight so once that's done we can confidently check this off our troubleshooting list and put the right crank arm back on and go about our way so we never want to put dry metal straight on dry metal so that's where some marine grade grease as a lubricant is very handy so we're going to put that right on the contact points clean it off the non-contact points and then get that crank started by hand making sure it is an exact opposite orientation to the crank that's behind it so just put the other crank facing down this one facing up and just give it some tap taps with my handy dandy rubber mallet once that's done we'll clean off these threads and use the 10 millimeter hex to put this bolt back on get in it nice and snug it needs to be pretty tight there and then of course tightening down these other two bolts with our four millimeter hex and that's it you're ready to go hope that helps thanks for watching we'll see you around